from your power pole underground all the way to your meter box into your garage into your 200 amp panel all in this video so you're going to find your nearest power pole closest to your garage that's going to be less money and wire less money and all your conduit underground less money in general the straighter you can get to where you're going the less material and the easier it will be to dig your trench it has to be three foot deep in the state of michigan and i believe it's a federal thing i'm not sure you want to use three inch scheduled 40 PVC conduit all the way down glue all the joints together it's easier if you're in a really rocky area digging this by hand unless you got some really tough daughters they could probably dig this for you oh. I want a lip from you we started out that way and then we decided using a backhoe the ends where it comes up to the pole right here has to be a 36 inch radius 90 degree 36 inch because their big wire will not bend anything sharper than that turn right here has to come up out of the ground about a foot to the pole and you're going to put duct tape over top of it right there but as you start installing your pvc at this end you're going to start by using poly string and run it through each pipe because you want to have a string to put through the other end so you can, they can pull their string or their wire through using that string so do not forget that step if you have to make bends to go around a tree or something in that sort, scheduled 40 condo actually bends a little bit. If you don't have to put any 90 degrees, 36 inch bends in your trench, it is mu you're much better off that way. You don't want to get it buried and not have your power company be able to get that wire through there because you got way too many bends. Once you get all the way to your garage where your meter box is going to be and you have that 36 inch 90, Coming up, you want it to come about level, just above grade right here. And you have to reduce the three inch to a two and a half inch. You reduce it two and a half inch, pointing straight up to where your box is gonna be. Once you go up with that, what you're gonna wanna do is get what they call a expansion joint. There will be a black line in it. You pull it apart, there'll be a black line. That's where you wanna stop. What this expansion joint allows is when the frost freeze happens, depending on your climate, the ground moves kind of up and down. You know, if you didn't have this on here, your PVC conduit would end up breaking when it's cold because of the ground moving up and down. This allows it to slip. Now, I believe it doesn't really say, but I would definitely make sure you put this end down because otherwise water, if it's up the other way, it seemed like it could settle inside the slip and maybe freeze and still break. So I pointed mine down, but be sure to pull it out I've seen other videos where people would install these and they would install them all the way tight, all the way closed. You cannot do that. You have to have it open to this black line. They draw a black line there because that's where they want you to set it. So remember this when you make your measurements for the rest of your installation. Have it set up to where the line is. By code, you need one clamp above your expansion joint onto this two and a half inch uh, PVC pipe one clamp but do not put it up until you finish your feed wire because I had it clamped right here and this got in my way I had to pull this out there's not a video out there like this I wish I had this before I started the project so put this last clamp on at the very last because I'm gonna go ahead and put it right up here now center of this box can be no higher than six foot and it could also be no shorter than four foot. You don't want it way down here to where kids will come up and try tampering. Before mounting your panel permanently up against your wall, you want to just put a couple screws in it to where you want it to be. That way you can get all your measurements done, but do not permanently put it up there. That was one of the mistakes that I made. I permanently put it up there before I stuck all these through the wall that goes inside up into my 200 amp uh, panel. Make sure this, you can move it on and off. When you're starting to do all your conduit, you don't have to try to slide it through the wall and get it up in these holes at the same time. It was a real pain in the butt that way. So do not permanently mount this until you are completely done. So you can actually mount your panel to the wall, whatever wall, whether you have a wooden wall, a metal wall, you can mount it any way you want. There's really no code on how you mount it, but you don't want it falling off. All I did was took a piece of one inch treated, one by six, I believe, treated board, Screw it to my metal between these big ribs right here and put a little silicone all around it and stuff. Screw it to it that way. I was able to screw it to these ribs 
the box itself to these ribs through there. And I was able to screw it to the wood as well through there. So it sits on there very, very good. I do not, I've seen them in the past where they were kind of falling off the wall. Real quick, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Anchor Solix and the new F3800 portable power station. This unit has 3,840 watt hours of EV class life PO4 batteries. These batteries are long lasting, designed with infinite power with 3,000 life cycles specifically designed to last up to 10 years with everyday use. The power inverter is massive at 6,000 watts. That right there can run multiple appliances in your home and power tools in your garage. The newest innovations by Anchor Solix on the F3800 is the bi-directional inverter. You can run 240 volts on one power unit, which unlike competitors, saving you thousands of dollars from having to buy more units to pair together. Making the Solix F3800 the best by far option for your home garage power backup system in case of power outage or a grid down situation. Although if you do want more than 3,800 watts of life PO4 battery power in one unit, you can expand this unit up to six additional batteries, giving you over 26,000 watt hours of battery capacity. And with that, you could run most homes for an entire week. Anchor Solix F3800 portable power station is designed to be the most accessible home power system available with minimal setup, with home light power anywhere. This unit is easily charged to 100% in under two and a half hours just by plugging it into your AC outlet in your home. If you happen to have solar, this unit can be charged to 100% in under two hours with a 2400 watt solar setup. So if you're looking for a great backup power unit, be sure to check out the Solix F3800 now as it's on a Kickstarter deal. Purchase using the link below and save 35% now. And we'll put it in the pinned comments as well. The earlier you sign up, the better your discounts are. The Kickstarter deals are the way to go, especially when you're spending money on great units like this. All right, so inside the box, don't worry about this wire not being connected yet. That's one of my oopsies that I did that you're not gonna do wrong because you're gonna watch this video and that's gonna be one thing you didn't do wrong because of what I did wrong. But anyway, when you connect all your PVC conduit, you have to put the metal lock ring on first before you put your plastic nylon bushing nut on top. You have to have the metal plastic lock ring. Don't know why it looks like it just fits funny and all, but that's what I needed to put in there for code. Also, be sure before you dig your trench, plan it out well. You cannot be within three foot of any gas lines, water lines, drain fields, and so forth. You gotta at least be three feet away from anything buried underground. Of that sort. We started our trench back in the winter time and I've been taking forever because I had no idea what I was doing when I was doing this. It took me a long time because I just kept getting frustrated. But if you're going to have to do what we did and fill your trench in before you finish your box, just leave it open at your box end. Leave the trench open a little ways, probably 12 foot from there so you can put your ground wire and stuff in if you haven't did that yet. Don't forget about that. When filling in your trench, do not just push these big rocks in with your tractor bucket right on top of your conduit that's underground because it will and can crack and break it. They want you to have a nice looser gravel over top of it first before you go caving all the big rocks back in it. 18 inches before you get to the top, you have got to remember to put your caution tape down that is supplied by the electrical company. Put the caution tape down first, then fill in the rest of your 18 inches all the way up to grade. Be sure to put that in there and leave it sticking out at both ends so the electrical inspector kind of sees that. We forgot to do it. I had to dig the whole trench back, down 18 inches, lay that stuff down, and bury it back up. What a pain in the butt that was, so don't make that mistake. So the reason we left the trench 12 feet without burying it first because we want to punch our ground rods in the ground and I've got really rocky ground so it made it made sense that I'm already three foot down why not put my ground rod directly in my trench and start hammering it down because then I'm going to bury it I'm already three foot to the good so your first ground rod I put it as close as possible to your garage your ground rod has your ground rod will be between eight and ten feet about a half inch thickness Made of copper usually, you want to hammer that directly in the ground as far as you can get it. And in our case, we put it underground so it's not sticking up anywhere. It's where we have to, where we can trip over and stuff. That's a good time. 
Not really. Whew. Next ground rod has to be no less than six feet from the first ground rod. You have to have two ground rods that hook to your 200 amp panel inside your shop. So the next ground rod is right about here. We hammered that thing all the way down as far as we can get it. That one went pretty well. And then you want to take your copper ground wire. You start here. What I did, I bolt, I clamped it down all the way to the ground as low as possible. A little leftover, I just wrapped it around the ground rod. And you take that one wire. You're not using two wires, you're using two ground rods, one continuous wire from this ground rod to that ground rod inside of your shop to your 200 amp panel. I ran that copper ground wire from my first ground rod to this ground rod, did the same thing, ran it through the clamp, clamped it up really tight, wrapped it around a little bit, and I took some one inch PVC that I had laying around. You actually don't need any PVC for your ground wire if you wanted to just run your ground wire in there, but I thought it would look cooler and more professional doing it this way. So I ran that through there and up and into my box. Then I buried my trench. I've got four young daughters and having ground rods sticking up inside of a trench what I found could be very deadly if you slipped and fell in it and landed on one of those. So be sure to do your ground rods all in one day and get it buried back up so nobody falls in it and you don't have any accidents. My ground wire coming through the wall into this little box all the way up. I bent it, bent it into my box, goes here all the way up the side away from all these. You do not want your ground wire near your power at all. All the way up, straight into that little spot, the ground spot right there, right next to your neutral. Your PVC power feed lines that come through here, you have to make sure you have that metal lock ring on this as well, followed by that plastic nylon nut bushing, whatever they call it, that screws on also. Do not forget that part. Oh, for your feed wire, you can either use copper or aluminum. If you use aluminum, you have to be sure to use the appropriate oxide inhibiting compound to all aluminum connections. So you wanna you put a, comp a compound in the ends of these connectors before you bolt it up if you're using aluminum. Aluminum is a lot cheaper, but I have seen a lot of aluminum fail and corrode and I decided to use the more expensive copper wire just so I could do it one time and not ever have to worry about a corrosion problem. Your neutral wire that comes in from your box back there has got to have the white tape on it so you clearly can see that that is the neutral wire. You have to get the white tape to tape up your neutral feed wire. So your inspector can literally look at it and tell very easily that this is your neutral wire. So you have got to get the white tape for your neutral wire. Like I said before, I did not install my third wire yet because I did not measure properly. So that was another thing when I measured this, it kind of looked like I could get away with four feet going from the meter box to all the way through the wall, down from the meter box, through the wall, all the way to the top of my long 200 amp panel in here. Four feet was not enough at all. I thought I could get away with 12 feet of this wire to save me a few bucks. I had to special order it and I was totally wrong. I was about six feet short. So be sure to run a tape measure down, up and over exactly where it's got to go and so you got plenty of room to make good good round bends you don't want to kink it and have it real tight but be sure to get a tape measure and measure almost 20 feet of wire to make three wires my three feed wires so be sure to measure that properly and don't skimp out on it if you got extra that's fine this box right here is what you is what they call a conduit body conduit box it's your 90 degree. Don't try to find a 90 degree elbow because that wire will not go through there. That is some big fat wire. It's even a pain in the butt to try to get it from here all the way through here, but you're able to pull it out of here, this opening right here, you're able to pull it out to run your wire, but it's a pain in the butt. This is a two inch PVC that I ran my feed wire through. Two inch schedule 40 PVC conduit is what I use to run my feed wire from this panel to my other panel inside the shop. Do your measurements and you'll know what you'll need. 
always remember the lock nuts on all of these connections before you put your plastic nylon nut over that. Get these, these will save you a whole lot of time and trouble. So same thing for this box inside your garage. There is no code of how you screw it to your wall. You can screw it directly to your metal, do the one inch board like I did on the outside. However you wanna do it, just make sure it is up there good. You don't want that thing to ever fall off, but there is no code on exactly how to do it. But I do know you don't want your main shut off any higher than six feet as well. So I have the complete diagram of how all your PVC is supposed to be ran, the dimensions, um, everything I will put on the screen. You can screenshot it. 